everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to continue talking about the esoteric keys to disclosure or the esoteric wisdom that is missing from the disclosure conversation. So we are going to be discussing the human form today or the metamorphosis of the human form on the earth as the earth has evolved over time. So I briefly mentioned this in the last lecture, and we're going to be going in a lot deeper today. Um, if you want to know more about the earth's evolution, you can go back and watch that first lecture. I will link it below. And let's dive into the evolution of the human form. So the idea within a lot of the disclosure community and part of the ufology com community and even the new age is very strange. There is this mindset and this, and this hyper focus on one particular stream or one particular myth that completely doesn't at all acknowledge the overall truth. Okay, so it's a hyper focus on one sort of event and one stream of humanity and the neglect and not understanding of the big picture at all. And this is actually extremely dangerous because when we start talking about the human form and how we came to be or human origins, we're really talking about our, our, our deep, deep, deep spirituality we're talking about our soul we're talking about the very nature of our being right so it's it's very important that we have a well-rounded realistic understanding of this so the one narrative that you hear over and over again in disclosure and also in you know the new age is that human beings are the product of alien manipulation so because there's been genetic manipulation in the past, that human beings were created from that manipulation. And if that manipulation didn't happen, then human beings wouldn't exist. And then that lends itself to this whole alien God ideology, that human beings would essentially be apes if aliens didn't come. And that alien beings are essentially responsible for the evolution of humanity through genetic manipulation through their help. And so it's infantilizing humanity underneath these alien gods and genetic engineering is apparently the evidence for that. Well, today we're going to actually go into how humanity evolves on this planet or goes through this distinct process of metamorphosis um, that really dwarfs the genetic modification myth. It doesn't exclude it. It doesn't say that these things didn't happen. It just gives you the bigger picture because that's what we really need moving forward. So the human form that walks the earth, that you have, that I have, that everybody has, it doesn't matter what color you are, what gender you are, none of that matters. The human forms that we have are the forms of the earth. And they are a direct expression of the earth and also the sun. Okay, that's what our form is. Our form really is the microcosm of the macrocosm. It is the cosmos in motion. It is a living cosmos. That's what our form represents. And that form is the form of the earth. The human being is not the Mars form. It's not the Venus form. It's not the Pleiadian form. It's not a form from another system. Every single planet has its own form, its own expression that is representing the quality of that planet. We are the form of the earth and we are directly connected to the earth's evolution. And in part, we are expressing the earth's evolution. We are directly linked. We evolve with the earth as part of the earth. 
our evolutionary impulse or the, or, or the impulse that leads to our metamorphosis over time is the sun, is a solar force and not the physical radiation of the sun necessarily, but radiation and cosmic rays that are spiritual and to a degree physical. That is what causes the metamorphosis of the form. And as a quick little side note, that's also why people want to hide the sun who are of a devolutionary paradigm or a dark paradigm. So let's get into the big picture. Let's get into the metamorphosis of the human form according to spiritual science or occult science. Um, if you go back into Eastern mysteries and the Eastern understanding, this teaching is there. And if you go into the Western occult science, this teaching is there. Like I mentioned with the evolution of the earth, the, the evolution of the metamorphosis of the human being is one of the basic core sciences in esoteric science. It is one of the key subjects. Cosmogenesis and anthropogenesis, key concepts in esoteric science because it is essentially the science and evolution of ourself. So just like the earth began as a sort of nebulous astral form, right? That was in a period of involution or essentially being seeded or absorbing the archetypal patterns of the higher planes. The human being was that as well. And so in the very earliest phases of the earth, the human being was with the earth what would be the human form was with the earth. And they were in a kind of nebulous cloud of warmth. And the human form at this time didn't have arms, it didn't have legs, didn't have hair, didn't have eyes, didn't have any of these things. These things come later. We were just sort of the pro projections of God's mind really. And we were being seeded with our potential, seeded with our truths, with these sparks of life, with the archetypes that we would eventually completely embody and then even evolve. Okay. Now the spiritual hierarchies are on a higher plane, but they're overlapping us. And they are the forces that are ringing into us. So we're a direct expression of the spiritual hierarchies and we're part of the spiritual hierarchy. And the human being of earth, of, of we, us, we are actually the 10th angel in the hierarchy of angels. So when we complete our final ascent as human beings on the earth, we will actually be a solar human being that is essentially an angel. We'll, we, we, we will join the rank of angel in the spiritual hierarchy. So that's actually the whole point of, you know, incarnating on a planet and, and, and being with it. Incarnating in a solar system is so that we can evolve to the point of materialization and then spiritualize out and become an angelic being. Right. This is the cycle of evolution that the human being goes through. Eventually, over time, from that nebulous form, you know, the human being and the earth aren't separate. They're together in one sort of astral mass. Eventually, it densifies into kind of more of a, a denser etheric mass, if you will. Right kind of like a gas and the human being within that mass is kind of like the yolk of an egg and the planet is almost like the white of the egg yolk. There's a bunch of little souls that are, for, that are beginning to shape their form. And then eventually the earth becomes more of like a watery state. It kind of forms the consistency of water. And then it becomes materialized. 
And the human form, again, is with the earth through this entire process. It is going through every single little evolution in every one of these phases. The human form is becoming more solidified, more dense. It is in a process of deep involution and absorbing the patterns of the stars, the patterns of the higher hierarchies within its being. It's it's blueprint, if you will. And as the planet gets more denser, the human being becomes more dense and more separate, more individuated. And this is the pattern of cosmic creation. The more dense we become, the more individuation occurs. So when we finally reach this peak materialization on the planet, which happens in the Atlantean epoch, we actually get something called the I, the I am consciousness, or in the Eastern traditions, it's called manas or mind. And so the peak of this materialization process, which is really the process of individuation, is our ability to think for ourselves, is our ability to have a mind, to be able to look at something objectively and make our own decision to form our own opinion. That is basically the individuation of the soul. And now you're an individual soul. Now you can evolve via your own volition, using your mind to make your own decisions, your own analysis, and you can move with God or against God. That's your choice. In the earlier phases of humanity, before materialization, we didn't have that choice. Now this is called pre-fall humanity. Now in pre-fall humanity, humanity functioned as a kind of hive mind. We were all interconnected and we were all sort of part of nature and we couldn't do any calculations. We couldn't really objectively understand anything. We didn't even really know what we were. We were just in the garden of Eden, if you will. And a lot of people in society really do miss this hive mind state where you don't have to take responsibility for anything. And um, also in these, the, the, the earlier epoch, especially the Lemurian epoch, when we're individuated enough, you know, to be dangerous, um, but we're not fully individuated enough in our mind, you know, we were completely dominated by these great spiritual leaders and these great spiritual teachers from the higher hierarchies. Um, and so there was no real sense of individuality or independence so the form was individuated in those earlier times, but we didn't have our own sense of mind. We couldn't make decisions. We didn't really know good or evil, right? So the earlier involution or materialization arc includes the human being going from really an astral nebulous form over time to actually having the very beginning of the physical body that we have today. And all along the way, we have these higher beings from within the spiritual hierarchy, these angelic beings, either angelic leaders or actual angels that are helping us along the way, guiding our evolution. And we even, well, many people have memories of walking with the gods, of the time in which the gods walked the earth. A lot of people call these gods aliens because the spiritual hierarchies are understood through planetary symbology and celestial symbology. The thing about the angelic hierarchies or the spiritual hierarchies is how they're delineated is they're associated with different planetary spheres, right? And they're even the regents of different planetary spheres. And so when the materialist mind looks back on spiritual writing about the spiritual hierarchies, 
they think that they're talking about aliens from different planets, right? What's happening is there's different realms of really the earth and the cosmos that are represented in different planets and stars, but it's really the spiritual hierarchy in which we're all a part of. And there's nothing alien about it. There's nothing extraterrestrial about it. And the spiritual hierarchy part of its whole goal is to add to itself, is to evolve itself through form. And so throughout human development, but especially in the earlier days before we had really individuated into our own solid form and even our mind had individuated into its own thinking organ, there were great spiritual leaders that were slightly in a different plane that guided humanity. And the peak of interacting with these spiritual leaders was in the Lemurian epoch and in the Atlantean epoch. And about halfway through the Atlantean epoch, when we get our individuality, so we sort of get that soul spark and we're now individual sovereign beings, that's actually when the spiritual hierarchies begin to move away from humanity. And they do that so that humanity can begin to develop itself via its own volition, so that it can actually use the organs of thought and discernment and these senses that the spiritual hierarchies have given us for built, have tried to help us form in our bodies for billions of years. Okay, so in the earlier years of development, the spiritual hierarchies were helping the human form evolve so that it was a direct embodiment of the earth and the cosmos. And of, and so that the human form was really an evolution of themselves. So as the spiritual hierarchies are helping humanity evolve, they also understand that the human being is going to reach a point where it will even one day potentially become more evolved than them. And it has the seeds of certain organs of perception, namely um, our individuality that even they don't necessarily have. And so as the spiritual hierarchies are helping the human being evolve, these very high beings are also understanding that there's going to come a point where they're even going to be into in soul in the forms that they're evolving into. So as the form is evolving, the spiritual hierarchies understand that there's going to be certain very advanced individuals that are actually going to begin to incarnate into the human form once it gets to a point where evolutionarily speaking, it has the potential to evolve even beyond themselves. So that's the point where you see the actual incarnation and the ensouling of very high beings in the human form is when that the human form actually reaches a stage where it finally has certain organs and perception that is even beyond what the angels have, okay? What, the, what, what certain angelic hierarchies have, okay? And so, We have a couple of concepts here that we have to really hammer home, which is that the human being has been with the earth from the very beginning. The human form has been forming with the earth from the very beginning. And every time the earth goes through a change or a shift, we could easily explain that shift as being a shift in density, like going down in density to physicality, or rising out of physicality into spirit, we could simply describe it as a shift in density. But really, there's something much deeper going on, which is that there's actually different organs being developed in the human body, even when it's a little bit of a nebulous form. You know, in the periods of the Polarian and Hyperborean epoch, the human form is still very nebulous. It hasn't taken its shape yet, but it's still gaining the ability to 
sense. It's sensing hot and cold. It's sensing the difference between dark and light. So even going as it's shifting, it's gaining senses. Not only is it gaining senses, the human form is starting to develop organs to perceive the physical world that is appearing around them. So as our environment changes, the form is actually developing certain organs that can perceive these changes. And how the earth changes and is shifting is that the elemental kingdoms um, and the elements are becoming more obvious and more alive. And so we're developing these organs of perception to basically perceive the world around us and everything that's happening around us is really a direct reflection and recapitulation of a higher world it's a direct reflection of god right and so it's actually a very holy stage of embodiment the first involutionary arc or spiritualization arc of the earth and then once we get to that halfway point in the Lemurian Epoch to the Atlantean Epoch, that's when the body finally has two arms, two legs. Um, eventually, we, we begin with one eye, which is where the idea of the cyclo cyclops comes from, because the first spectrum of light was actually a very delicate astral light. It was actually a different spectrum of light entirely that we had in the um, earlier phases of humanity around the early Lemurian epoch. But then as we move down in density, the light spectrum changes and we get two eyes. And that first third eye goes and recesses deep, deep, deep in our brain because that third eye in our brain is the eye that perceives the astral light. And our two eyes are the eyes that perceive this more physical light associated with the spectrum of the material plane. And so this is why some people have psychic visions and can actually perceive astral light still. Astral light is just psychic vision. It's the light of the astral plane, right? And so that's because their pineal gland is open or that eye is, is working still, right? But we all initially had that eye as an early first eye of the human developmental form right? And then as we sunk deeper into matter, there's that individuation that happens and a splitting that happens. And now we have two eyes, we have two arms, we have two legs. And even earlier in the Lemurian form, um, which I may or may not have lectured on by now, but the bottom part of the human being, which are our legs now, was actually one, it was actually like a serpentine looking thing, you know, and so that had to actually be cast out of the body. And then we got our true form. So there's actually a, a, a very interesting process in the Lemurian Epoch where the human form was just taking place. And there were a lot of different influences that wanted to enter the human body. So there was a lot of different kind of animal influences or soul essences that were taking the form of an animal and trying to influence and enter the body in an animal form. And there was also there was just, just um, also different sort of fallen forces that were trying to enter the body, higher forces that were trying to also shape the body. And so in Lemuria, there was really a real battle for the form. There was a real battle for what kind of forces were going to be able to incarnate into the human body and essentially rule the earth, okay? And so it was the spiritual hierarchies that ultimately won out this battle and guided human evolution so that the human form could be a direct expression of the sun and of the earth and of God, okay? That was the whole goal of the angelic hierarchies helping us is that the form again has to be a microcosm of the of, of the macrocosm right that 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 has to happen if it doesn't if it doesn't represent that then the form is a failure right
And so there was a great battle for the kinds of soul essences and influences that were going to be able to enter into the body and shape it, what kind of organs it was going to develop. And eventually by the Atlantean epoch, the gates for that closed. So any divergent forms of the human being were not able to make it into the Atlantean epoch. So basically, if there were certain forms that were hardening as the planet was becoming more and more dense, and they were hardening and taking the form of like an animal human, or even the dual sexed beings, if they were unable to manifest either a male or female form, those soul essences were unable to continue incarnating on the planet. Now, the soul essences or the extraneous beings that were trying to enter the form and giving it those impulses, those still remain outside of our developmental sphere, in the eight sphere. So all of these forces that were once trying to enter the Lemurian body and craft it and shape it, they get cast out of the form and cast out of the planet periodically the gates close, but they're always kind of trying to get back in, right? This is the reality of having a, an evolutionary arc that evolves through metamorphosis is that these challenges to evolve the form are basically like little initiations. And there's certain soul essences that are able to pass these initiations, but certain soul essences are also left behind because for whatever reason, they're not able to do the task at hand. So there's sort of this trail of beings that are essentially outside the human life wave. They were with humanity in the very beginning, but at some point in, in the human and planet's evolutionary journey, they were unable to um, align with God and nature and harmonize with the task at hand and enter the form. And in the early days, they were, these kind of soul essences were unable to actually create a form that would survive into the future. There was something missing. It was unnatural. Um, because everything that we, in order for the human form to go through these processes of natural metamorphosis, we have to be able to align with the solar logos or the truth. And we just become an expression of it. We can't really go outside of it. When you try to work against God, nature, and the logos, you, you end up going into um, a period of deformation. So you'll actually deform, you'll actually devolve. So when it comes to human beings, human beings are either evolving or we're devolving. And that's always been the case from the very beginning. Okay, and so this is also something very important to understand about the evolution of the human form on this planet is that some souls were able to really shape the form in earlier days to be a direct embodiment of God. But there were some soul essences that didn't agree with that and wanted the body to be different. Um, but it was not the form of the earth. It was something else. And that's a different video. That's a different lecture. But I'm, I'm just really trying to hammer home that our human form is the microcosm of the macro and that it has formed over an extremely long period of time little by little by little by little by little and our souls have been crafting the form along with the higher hierarchies so that over this long period of time our human body is becoming this divine vessel that represents god and there's been so many periods where organs were developed and we took them on and our perspective completely changed. 
we take them for granted now, but we had to actually, in earlier portions of our development, we actually had to learn how to smell. We had to actually develop the sense of smell. We had to develop the ability to have touch. We had to develop our sight. And again, the earlier form of sight was astral sight, astral light. We had to form these limbs. We had to form two arms and two legs and five fingers and five toes because there's a holy and sacred reason why we have five fingers on earth, why we have five toes on earth. There's a holy and sacred reason why we have a heart organ, a liver, a kidney, okay, lungs. Every part of our body, every organ that we have, we had to consciously form as the result of us adapting to spiritual impulses and also the more physical, denser impulses of the planet. So our form is this exact bridge between heaven and earth. And we had to build all of this for a very, very long time. And then once the form was physicalized perfectly, and this happened in the Atlantean era, then we went on to use that force to perfect our, ourselves, our inner world. And so all of that effort, we now became self-aware, right? Once the physical body was formed, we suddenly became self-aware. This is the manas, this is the I am, this is the I in anthroposophy. We suddenly become aware. And then through that awareness, we now have this ability to evolve ourself. So we're no longer, you know, outside of our body creating an organ for ourself, right? As a higher aspect of creation, we're now fully in the body. And we're using that power of creation to actually directly evolve ourself. And this is how the evolution of humanity works. In the very beginning, we used a lot of our creative power to actually create this form and all of the organs that we have, all the perception that we have, right? And think about how deeply into that we can go. Think about how we can look at every single organ that we have every single perception that we have and think about how we had to actually consciously as a soul essence form that in the body and then incarnate into the body. It's absolutely incredible. And this is why looking down the barrel into the future, you see all of these absolutely bizarre and dark ideologies that are talking about like, I'm going like, let's genetically, manipulate ourselves, you know, let's add microchips to our brains and to our bodies. And it's absolutely ridiculous. You know, that is destroying something that took us countless billions of years to actually create. Now we're going to destroy it as soon as we get our eye, as soon as it's complete, as soon as we've reached that level of perfection of the human being. Now we're going to destroy it by thinking that we can genetically modify ourselves into a higher form, thinking that we can add a microchip and, and ascend into the cloud or something. This is a delusion. And it very clearly becomes delusion when we actually understand our past. There's no way any reasonable person can go and participate in something like a CRISPR or genetic modification. If you know what it took for you to materialize this form and every capacity you have and every organ you have, you would not touch it and you would actually treat it as a temple and you would listen to it and you would use it to know yourself because you would see it as an absolute miracle. And you would see this ideology to 
manipulate the form through genetic modification and DNA test and, and DNA harvesting and all of that as a sick inversion of reality where there's still people in, in, on the earth and, and beings outside of the evolutionary paradigm that still think you evolved through creating a physical change. We haven't been in that paradigm for thousands of years. And even when we were working upon ourselves more physically, it was never through genetic modification the way that they're doing it. So this is a complete backwards, bizarre attempt to do something that will absolutely positively destroy the form. And you want to avoid it like the plague. You want to avoid transhumanism like the plague. And you want to avoid doing any kind of genetic modification and this weird scientific religion like the plague. Okay. So just to get on to the next part of this video, once we, once we physicalize, right? After countless years of developing every sense and organ we have consciously as a reflection of God, once we physicalize, we suddenly begin to go inside and we develop through self-awareness and that whole process that we did creating the physical form, we actually turn inward to develop our soul. And that's what causes the spiritualization of the form out of matter. And this is also an anthroposophy. This is also associated with the etherization of the blood. And I have a lecture on that. I can link that below where actually over the um, next several thousands and thousands of years, our form is actually going to become less dense and we are going to be able to consciously do that through aligning with Christ in our heart center, which actually changes the quality of our blood, the spiritual nature of our blood. And it raises us ever so slightly higher and higher into the spiritual planes. Okay. So if you were to track your reincarnation process from here, your soul would actually be, if you're able to achieve this and align with God and align with Christ, these Christ forces that are within our body and within our being. And remember that Christ is the solar spirit, right? Is He's the great solar level force. So when we're able to align with that entity, that presence that was worn and taken on by Jesus 2000 years ago, and we're able to connect with that essence and work it within us. We actually spiritualize out of matter. And if you were to reincarnate again, you would find that your next incarnation, your body will be less dense than it is today. Um, and there's lots of different teachings around this we can get into much later. But I'm just wanting to illustrate this very important arc of evolution, which is that the human being has always been with the earth. And there's never been a point where the human being hasn't been evolving and going through a process of constant metamorphosis with the earth. There's never been a point the human being wasn't here. You know, sometimes in the ufology scene and in, in, in the new age scene, um, there's this idea that the planet was seeded by aliens. This is not true. Okay. The earth was not seeded here by aliens. The earth has seven kingdoms of life. Okay. Um, three kingdoms are lower kingdoms that are sort of different elemental kingdoms. And then there's the mineral kingdom, the plant kingdom, the animal kingdom, and the human kingdom. All of these kingdoms of life are part of the planet's soul essence. 
And the planet goes through a cycle of life in which these kingdoms start at a very kind of basic level and rise up and flower and peak. And then it goes through a death. And now this death process in the Eastern mysteries is called a pralaya. So a planet has periods of life and death in which these life streams or these kingdoms of life, which are with the planet from its very creation until its very end, they are what rise into life and then disappear again. So it is completely delusional and arrogant for anyone to say that a being from the cosmos is like bringing the life wave of the planet and responsible for the plant life, the mineral life, the animal life. It's ridiculous. No, every plant on the earth is an expression of the earth. And it has evolved over a very long time to be that. Okay? Every animal on the earth is an expression of the earth and has evolved over a long period of time to be here. Don't take that away from those kingdoms of life. Don't take away the larger process of embodiment that our earth goes through. The elemental kingdoms, those are also with the planet during its life and are a direct expression of it. The mineral kingdom is a direct expression of our earth and has been crafted to express our earth directly. And there's a time where they die and there's a time where they're reborn and that's in that rebirth of these kingdoms of life or the planet coming alive is according to its time schedule of birth and death. A planet is just like a human being. We have a time of birth. We go through different phases of development and then we die. A planet comes alive, goes through different phases of complexity and development, then it dies. And then it comes alive and does the whole thing again in a little bit of a different density. Okay, that's the reality. None of that happens because an alien or a being from another world physically came to the planet and seeded it. There is a process of transmigration of souls and of karmic energy from different planetary spheres in our solar system. But that's on the astral plane. That's on the astral level. When a planet enters a pralaya phase or its death phase, it opens to the spirit world and it receives the planetary karma from different planetary spheres in our solar system and from our sun. It is patterned in an involutionary cycle with the different sequences it's going to come to life with again. But even then, the information from Mars or from Venus or the sun or wherever, it's never just raw, purely that planet manifesting here. The earth always takes that on and turns it into its own thing and expresses it. So it's just an influence. And this happens not because entities, aliens do that, but because there are ways that are guided by spiritual hierarchies that are non-physical that help the planetary spheres interact in this way because the solar system is like one big school for souls. And that, and that includes transmigration of souls from different planetary spheres at certain times <clears throat> that can be tracked and known. Um, and also the sort of life and death of a planet that is happening on certain schedules that is known. Um, and the sort of transmigration of planetary karmas that come into the earth or go from planet to planet in the astral archetypal plane. <laughs> so you're not getting actual, like you're not getting a spaceship pulling up to a planet that's in a pralaya or it's dead period like Mars or something. You're not getting people pulling up to the planet and like dropping some tomato seeds and bringing some oxen. That is a materialistic idea of a spiritual concept of the transmigration of souls and of the transmigration of different planetary energies 
while a planet is in its Perlea phase. It's something that happens completely in the astral plane. It's not even a physical thing. How could it? It can't be. The physical plane is only the plane of transformation. It's a plane of birth, of death. Sorry, excuse me. It is a plane of death and rebirth. Death and rebirth. It's not the plane where, uh, it's not the root plane. It's not the causal plane. All right. So this is also another big time delusion and a big time misunderstanding that I hear all the time in the spiritual community and in the UFO community. And it is completely ignorant of the spiritual science and the occult science behind what a planet is, how a planet evolves. We're entering into these topics with absolutely no understanding of the framework of what we're talking about. And it's dangerous because, again, you get these materialist interpretations where you have aliens doing everything. When in reality, a lot of this stuff happened on like the astral plane or, you know, a higher causal plane and actually didn't even occur on the material plane at all. So there's a lot of conflation going on that is creating delusion, delusional ideas about how things work. So now we understand that the human being, you know, everything about us, everything about the human form today is... You know, we should view ourselves as an expression of God. And that's why all of those occult drawings always show like the human form uh, on the pentagram, which represents the earth as an exact embodiment of the earth. And as a completely spiritual form, I mean, we've achieved something incredible, which is we've been able to on this planet over countless billions of years going from an astral form to a material form, we've, we've, we've been able to materialize this body. And there were so many points in that evolutionary period of descension and materialization that we could have failed. So we really have to understand that when people say, call your body a temple, that they are 100% true. It is a temple. It is a holy form, whether you think, whether you've got one leg or whether you've got one eye or whether you, you like your, your hair color or you think, you're, you, you, you think your form isn't great. No, the template of your form is perfect. And it took a long time to get here. A lot of time and a lot of effort to get here, okay? So now that we can feel the weight of that, we can feel the absolute weight of how important our form is, the human form is. Um, let's get into some of the misunderstandings that arise when we don't understand that history, when we don't understand the reality of the physicalization of our form over a long period of time. So what ends up happening when we don't understand that piece? is that we fall prey to one of the most dangerous ideologies in the new age and ufology and the disclosure scene, which is that human beings were actually created by basically these fallen angels from Mars or Aldebaran or Nibiru or, you know, sometimes the origin changes, but the story is all the same, which is that these alien beings basically come to the earth and they find this lower primate form and they either mate with that primate form or they genetically manipulate that primate form by merging it with themselves or both. And that actually creates the human being as we know. And, and they talk about chromosome two and all these different strange things going on in the human genome. 
And so there's this origin story that literally gets millions and millions and millions of dollars pushed behind it. And it's completely wrong. It's completely disempowering. It's that's not how human beings were created. That's not how the human form came to be. When you look in the mirror, you're not looking at the product of an ape and an alien from Mars or from Aldebaran or from Nibiru or from wherever this they say that it comes from because I'm sure that they'll just choose whatever location as they see fit because the only thing that matters is that we believe that we're an unholy form anyway. And so that narrative hangs out in the new age and on television and in ufology and nobody goes deeper. Nobody goes any farther on it. They just get caught up in it. They feel religious about it. They defend it. And nobody wants to just go a little bit deeper and a little bit further because what I'm saying doesn't negate that there's been genetic manipulation. You know, what I've said, talking about the big picture here, I'm not negating that there can be interdimensional beings or um, different beings from another sphere that have come here at a certain point in our development and manipulated our genetics. I am not against that at all. I'm not arguing against that. What I'm saying is that's one line. That's one stream of the earth. That's one stream of humanity. And that there is another stream and another reality that has gone into our form and our existence that's just as important, if not more so, than that story. So why are we leaving this out? And it is this. It is that while the earth was in its pralaya period or its death period, it sort of splits in two. Just like how, you know, when we die, there is the corpse, right? And then the soul rises up out of the body and it then goes through its death cycle in, in, in the cosmos, right? But the body is, is the, the, the corpse is, is there, right? This is very similar actually to how the earth evolves as well. When it reaches the end of a cycle, it goes through a period of catastrophes and it will go into a pralaya period where there really isn't a whole lot of life left on it. And during this pralaya period, part of the earth ascends and goes into the cosmos and it does that process I just mentioned where it receives the inspiration and the metamorphosis from the sun and the spiritual hierarchies. And then eventually it comes back around and it remerges with the planet and eventually it comes back together. So really when we're looking at any planetary sphere, there's a higher aspect of it that always separates from the lower aspect at the end of an evolutionary cycle. And then when it comes back again, it goes through a little rebirth and there's an evolutionary jump that occurs. So there's all these little evolutionary jumps that are not because an alien came to the planet and like fiddled with DNA or mated with an animal. It's literally from the reality that the planet and, the bee and, and, and human beings went into a higher condition, came back around, and when they remerged with the planet, they represented a higher evolutionary impulse. So it's kind of like the planet is almost fertilized in, in, in a way, and it comes back to itself, and then there's this new energy, and life begins again, and it's a little bit more advanced than the last time. So... In this way, there really is a lower earth 
and there's a higher earth. And on the lower earth is sort of, there's sort of some fallen dramas that will occur. And then the higher aspect of the earth, which divides like this, like we're going, we talk about this all the time, like judgment day and these kinds of things. This has happened in a smaller spiritual way for a long time. And what ends up happening is that there's sort of a, the souls that have passed the initiation of the era, they go with the higher earth and they're, they're, they're attached to it. They're part of it. They're part of that. And they go through evolutionary shifts as well. And really a new, more advanced form also is being seeded also through spiritual means, not because aliens are going there and seeding it, but because they're exposed to different energies. The form changes naturally to reflect that. But then on the lower earth, something else is occurring. And this is sort of full, you know, on the corpse of the earth or in the lower earth, there is all of the different creatures that are sort of, um, well, not all the creatures, but there's, there's still life on the earth, but it's, it's sort of dying and it's, it's not in its peak. And there's one species um, on the planet that will remain with the earth, which represents the fallen humanity. So whenever we reach the end of a cycle, there is, a, again, a line of humanity that sort of rises and continues on in the next cycle. But there's also a line of humanity that is fallen and that does not continue on. Now, this is obviously a lecture in itself, and I'm not going to be able to go into all the intricacies of the splitting of the worlds and different lines of humanity. I just simply cannot cover that today. But what I want to illustrate for you is that at the end of the Lemurian Epoch, this splitting did occur. And that the lower earth had a kind of fallen humanity on it. Now, the fallen humanity was human beings that had basically fallen backwards into the animal kingdom. Now, the whole point of Lemuria, as I've mentioned in this video and in my last video, was basically to get the form to a point where it didn't have any animal influences anymore. And it was able to manifest in two sexes. So you couldn't have the androgynous forms anymore that characterize the first two epochs or any animal forms. The human being had to basically manifest as dual sexed and it couldn't have any animal influences in it anymore. And that's what was needed to move into the next epoch. Now, what ended up happening was that during the dark age of Lemuria, um, certain forms were created that were basically part ape and part human. And so in this way, certain humans were sort of following this impulse to almost devolve into the animal kingdom. They couldn't rise up and fully enter the human kingdom. They, there was still this desire to fall backwards into the animal kingdom. They couldn't quite develop the organs of perception and the impulses that were needed. They couldn't align with the sun and with the logos and correctly pattern themselves. They couldn't sense it. And so they, were, they evolved backwards into the animal kingdom. And so there were, there were a bunch of these different sort of ape-like human forms. So on the lower earth, there was these lines of basically human apes. And it reminds me of like 2001 Space Odyssey, um, I think, or, you know, Planet of the Apes, things like this. There actually was a period at the end of Lemuria where there was a fallen line of humanity that could not rise into the human kingdom and they existed as apes. 
Now, we don't really have these ape-like beings around anymore. Their closest ancestor would be the great apes, but it was much more intense back then. There were more varieties. Um, and ever since then, you know, because the earth evolves and changes its constitution, not all animals survive. Like there's many different kinds of animals and even people that have become extinct because their era on the planet was complete, right? So we, we don't have all of the creatures and forms that we did in the earlier epochs of the earth. Only certain forms can make it through the gate. So while this period was going on and the fallen earth is sitting there and it has all of these ape-like humans on it that are basically half human, half animal. They're not fully human is what I'm trying to say. The human forms and the human line has ascended above the earth and it's really on a different earth. Now, eventually these earths are going to merge again, remember? Because this earth that's left there with the animal human beings, it's like a corpse. This is like a corpse, if you will. It's dying. Eventually, the higher earth is going to go through its process of transformation. And it's going to come back around and it's going to animate that corpse again. And it's going to be full of inspiration and evolutions on itself. And it'll, it, it'll come to life again. Another continent will rise and earth will go through more of an evolutionary cycle. The human form will be more advanced. Okay. It'll, it'll, it'll have different organs. And so basically what ended up happening was that there was a visitation on the earth by basically other human beings from our solar system that were trying to escape death. And they're associated with the planet Mars. And um, they actually did come to the earth and modify these fallen ape-like humans. Okay. And they didn't do this because they were amazing people that wanted to lift these souls that were now sort of trapped in these ape-like bodies out of the animal kingdom. They did that because their world was destroyed, because they had destroyed their world. And they had destroyed their world because they became too obsessed with technology. The masculine impulse was too great. And they were extremely toxic and extremely dark. And they used technology to overcome their own death and to lower into a different planetary sphere, which was possible at that time from their level of density to ours. It is not possible today. And we'll get into that in a different video. So it was this weird time in the solar system where something like that was possible, but it's not possible in that way today. A lot of people think it is, but it's, it's not actually possible. And we will get into that in a different video. So we actually did have a visitation in this very weird twilight period on the earth where that did happen. And the reason why they modified these ape-like people was because they wanted to stay on the planet. They had destroyed their world. There was nothing left. And if you follow my series, Mars Mysteries, I chronicle this very closely for this reason, because this is when this dark impulse really enters the earth in a profound way that we are still battling with today. And these people that are still part of this wave today, they believe this origin story because this is their origin story. And this is what they have participated in on a soul level or beings around them are telling them or whatever it is. They're attached to this ideology for whatever reason. And they believe it. But I'm here to say that there's something else also going on and that this is the lowest evolutionary paradigm imaginable. It is literally a being, beings that came from the Martian sphere to Earth, manipulated fallen ape-like human beings. And then uh, because they destroyed their own world, if you destroy your planet, if you reach a point where you develop advanced technology and you begin to gain power over nature and you destroy your world, you have failed. 
you have failed the initiation of being human. You have failed the initiation of our solar system and our cosmos. You have failed. The idea and the ultimate realization is to harmonize with the planet, to see that we are the planet, that we are the cosmos, to harmonize with it and to learn to read it and communicate with it and to see it as a part of ourselves, to be custodians of it. That is the initiation. You destroy your planet, you fail. There is nothing noble about it. And all these apparent beings that are out there floating around in motherships and stuff that have no planet to, to evolve on, that's a red flag. Because the goal for any soul is to evolve on its mother, its planet, to not destroy it. There's nothing advanced about abandoning your planet. There's nothing advanced about trying to play God to people. This is sick. It's not normal. It's not normal. Okay? But we have this impulse, this Martian impulse that is inside humanity now because eventually they set up camp on this planet and in the area of around Antarctica, they set up camp. But there's only certain areas of the planet that they really had access to and there's a very thick fog and the planet was still solidifying a little bit there. And so while they're here, they're thinking that they're the highest life on the planet and they have their slave kingdom or whatever sick stuff is going on. And they're basically recreating Mars on Earth they're recreating all their weird technologies. They're just continuing because they never died. They never faced their karma. They never had to actually confront the shadow within themselves. They just escaped the planet, right? And it was possible, again, at this weird twilight period that isn't possible all the time. So moving forward in time, obviously the Earth's higher self begins to merge with that corpse again it begins to reanimate the earth and so you have the real humans of the earth the real human forms of the earth the real human bodies of the earth and the real souls that have been with the earth through its entire development that have passed all the initiations that are in line that are the true masters of this earth they're coming back in and they're merging and the fogs are lifting and they're realizing, who are these people here in Antarctica? Who are these people here that are basically creating these weird technologies and they're like genetically modifying like the, the ape beings that were here? And, you know, perhaps the higher humans of the earth that had passed that graduation wanted to work with these ape beings in order to spiritually evolve them, right? Because this is the whole thing about the other side. In the Casey work, it's the Amelius group, right? They work through metamorphosis and transformation spiritually, which is the highest and truest way and the only real way, right? Because that's the causal plane. That's where everything begins anyway. It has to begin there. You can't create a change physically in like the body and then think it's going to automatically transfer to the spiritual plane. No, that's insanity. That, that's inversion. That's materialist delusion sickness kind of stuff. The change has to be in the spiritual plane, in the mind, and then it comes down here. And we have our will that helps us to be magicians here and to do those kinds of changes, but it begins in the spiritual planes first. And so then you have the forces of Belial that are associated with Mars um, I believe in theosophy, they called them the lords of the dark face. And all of these black magicians that had incredible technology that came from this fallen sphere. Again, some people call it Mars. At uh, times it's called Nibiru, Aldebaran. It could, the name of it that could be changed, right? It could, the, the people who want to profess this myth can change it. We have to understand the underlying dynamic. And so they're there. And they're this basically fallen race of people that are embodying the fallen angel impulse as well. 
And they think this planet's theirs now. They think they own it and they don't. They actually have no spiritual right to it. They're not actually the humans of the earth. They're the humans of Mars. But because Mars is also filled with some of the forces of the earth, they're able to somewhat live, but because they've merged with animals um, and beings that are of the earth, they can stay. And it's actually a very important part of, um, uh, of them being here was they actually had to mix their genetics with a female, especially a female human of the earth with an Eve of the earth. And so for them in their paradigm, like Eve is an ape. Eve is not an ape, right? Eve is a human being. Eve was never an ape, actually. The, the essence of Eve and the Mary soul was never an ape. And that is actually a very big hint. Okay? So, ultimately, the form, the land mass of Atlantis begins to come out of the fog. Okay? And it begins to harden. And the, Atlantean, and, and the Atlantean epoch reaches its peak. And so the people of Atlantis were the people of the earth at that time. And the evolutionary impulse was coming from Atlantis. But these beings from Mars were actually stuck in, in, in what, what would be known as Antarctica today. And for a long time, they actually couldn't even make it to Atlantis. They actually couldn't even get on the landmass because it hadn't solidified yet, it would sort of appear and disappear. And for the Atlanteans, sometimes the other areas of the earth would appear and disappear because the corpse of the earth, the, the fallen aspect of the earth that was sleeping and, and dying and dead was sort of remixing with its higher aspect. And so they couldn't always see each other, but then eventually right around the, the, the middle period or, you know, they, they were finally head to head. And suddenly there's these weird people, you know, that have taken over the planet and they're battling with the real humans of the earth that have never had anything to do with apes. The apes were the fallen humans of the prior epoch. And these, these fallen angel people from Mars have actually come in and disturbed everything. And so this is making a very long and complex story short, but ultimately through just telling this small portion of it, you can clearly see that there's two there's two lineages, right? There's two lines of humanity that are very different. And each one has to be understood in its own right and in its own truth, because these are two different impulses that now exist within you and within everyone. And the one that you pay attention to the most will rule you because you decide with your will and with your focus what you create and what you proliferate and what you align with. Is there any question why the lowest possible evolutionary timeline of the earth is pushed and pushed and pushed by shows like Ancient Aliens and um, Von Daniken and the History Channel and Gaia? It's pushed like it's some big revolutionary concept. No, it's completely dark and fallen, and it is a lie. It is a lie by omission. Why? Because there's a complete other line of humanity that never fell. That is the real human form of the earth, the real essence of the human being on the earth that has never had an ape quality to it. Now, the people who associate with this, with this alien God ideology will say that it's the aliens, that it is the Martians, the Aldebarans, if you like, the Nazi esoteric version of this, the Nibirans, the Anunnaki. Choose whatever name or version you want from whatever cultural paradigm in which this has been parroted. 
because this story has been parroted for thousands and thousands of years and it is just coming up again. They say that the angelic aspect of the human being is because these aliens came from another planet and gave it to us. No, no. The angelic quality to humanity, the part that is not associated with any animal nature is the part of the human being, the line of humanity that is within you, that's within everyone that has been evolving with the earth from the very beginning of its life. That is the human angel. That is the higher human form. Not some fallen, alien, Martian, whatever, that was escaping its own death, escaping their own paradigm to come to this planet. That is not the angelic presence. That is not the power to rise humanity. That is not the angelic aspect. That is not the human element to us. That was actually, that's actually, those Martian beings were actually extremely fallen and degraded compared to what the real humans of the earth are. So they are hijacking and stealing our origin story and replacing it with this ridiculous one at the expense of something that is so precious to us, which is our own history and our own understanding of the human form. The human form, its root is not an ape. The human form, the root is not a monkey. The apes are the fallen version of humanity that began in the Lemurian epoch at the end. And there was beings that came from another sphere that manipulated those beings in order to bind with them so they could stay here because they destroyed their world. And at this period of time, the humans of the earth were in an ascended state. So I hope that this makes sense to you. And you can understand now that if you don't know how the human form began on this planet and how our form was so hard won in this long and beautiful process of metamorphosis, how there's a planetary dance that goes on where the planet even splits into two different bodies, one spiritual body and one, one corpse, and that that spiritual body is anointed with the evolutionary impulse and returns to the form, and that souls and human beings are within that, cycling through. If we don't know these very important metaphysical realities, we're going to believe the worst. We're going to believe things about ourselves that are demeaning. Like that we're, we were originally like apes and were risen up by aliens. That the reason why we have any progress or evolution or any sense of spirituality or any soul is because a bunch of aliens merged with apes. Now, Again, I want to be very clear because people always think that I'm negating genetic modification. No, I'm trying to take this one step further and point out that genetic modification is the religion of the fallen angels. These beings that came from the Martian plain, possessed with these fallen angel forces, that think that evolution happens through them as gods. And so when you look back at the Anunnaki 
legends, right? What you're really looking at is you're looking at a paradigm. They're trying to tell you that you evolve through genetic modification. Had these, had these, had these uh, fallen angels not shown up and either mated with you or merge their DNA with yours, you would still be an ape grazing the plains of the Sahara. That's where you would be. And guess what that does? That removes your sovereignty as an individual. And that removes your hard-won ability to create your own reality, to understand your own soul. Because now... You're tethered to this sick ideology where aliens are gods and they're the reason why you have any development. Well, subconsciously and spiritually, that's just creating attachments. When these weird origin stories come up that take away your own development, your own metamorphosis, your own spiritual evolution and replace it with an alien being, that is creating an attachment. Make no mistake. The reason why... This origin story exists and there's millions of dollars behind it on Gaia, on the History Channel, and Lord knows how many books since the 70s for sure. Many of them connected directly to Nazi propaganda and Nazi origin myths, by the way, as well. When we believe these things, we make communion and contact spiritually with these beings and the beings in their echelon, which are dark. These stories exist to create attachments, okay? That is why this happens. And the people who propagate these myths have these attachments. And I have to be real black and white about it, because again, there is a much larger picture that is going on when it comes to the origins of the human being and our planet. And at no time has a human being ever evolved because of genetic manipulation. Genetic manipulation is a devolution. And the only reason why we believe that we evolve through CRISPR or through tampering with our genetics is because we have sunk so deeply into a materialist, materialist delusion that we actually think that we evolve based on the physical plane, which is an inversion of reality. Everything that happens on the physical plane, every evolutionary impulse comes from the top down. And it is our will that allows us to channel that properly so that we evolve with the logos, with the world at large. So... I know this is a lot to take in, and I know that um, there's a whole alternate origin story that has to be thought over. But when we understand how the earth evolves, when we understand how human beings have evolved over time, we become empowered to actually do these kinds of calculations ourselves, which is that when something comes at us that is a lie, that is designed to disconnect us from our divinity and our birthright as the human beings of this planet, we can say, you know what, I understand the spiritual science behind this. I understand our ancient past. I understand how the planet forms. I understand how the planet evolves. I understand how the human being forms. And I understand how the human being evolves over a long period of time. And what you're saying is completely different to that. And you can negate it. And you're not going to get caught up in years of delusion with lower astral entities and lies that, that are designed to basically pull you out of your sovereign state, right? When we, when we understand spiritual science, which includes our ancient, ancient past 
in which the in which the earth was actually a different density and when we understand the different planes we understand how a planet lives how it dies just like a human being we understand all of these things we are so strong and we are so powerful and we can't really be tricked because we understand the rhythm and laws of life itself spiritual science occult science mystery science So thank you guys so much for joining me today. Um, I'm going to get into in my next lectures more into uh, different, um, the esoteric history and sort of laws behind beings coming from other spheres and how that happened in our past and the specific laws around it. Because another thing that I see is sort of this um, introduction that the earth can be visited at any time, any place, anywhere by like an alien um, or like, or an interdimensional. And this is not true. It's not complete chaos. If it's truly a being from another sphere, there are absolute laws about when these gates open and when they close. It's not a free-for-all, okay? The only time that something really is a free-for-all like that is if you're working with the lower plane of the earth itself, which is essentially full of fallen beings or the eight sphere, which are just fallen earthly beings that are already part of our development. So they can kind of come and go very easily if they're summoned. But real beings from different planetary spheres is a very different conversation. And in our next lecture, we're going to get into these star influences and we're going to start to parse out what's the difference between a being from another sphere and a being from the eighth sphere or the lower astral plane of our own earth. Because of course, these beings from the lower plane of our own earth, they look alien because they're devolved, because they're out of the life wave. They don't look like us because they have fallen out of the life wave at some point and began devolving, okay? That's why most aliens have, most what, what is called aliens and stuff have, you know, you know, robot parts or they have, they look like a devolved human or there's chimeras and things like this. There's a, there's a reason for that. And we're gonna get very deeply into this in our next lecture and hopefully over the next coming months as well. So thank you for joining me for the second lecture in the Esoteric Secrets of Disclosure. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave your questions below. I can also spend some time taking a look and screenshotting your questions to answer them. Um, as always, all my love your way. And don't forget to sign up for my website so I can connect with you uh, during my live Q&As. There's also forums that are really active and so many amazing mystics and incredible people that you can talk to. Um, there's a whole community on there, so I'd love to see you there. You know, there's so many great conversations to be had um, that are going on there. So I'd love to see you and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in our next video.